right, this is my 2010 KTM 530 EXC. I just picked this up used. Uh, I took it out on one trip. It ran great. I'm totally happy with it. It's tons of fun. Uh, but I want to do some maintenance on it, given it's a used uh, bike, just so that I can set a baseline of maintenance and go from there. One of the things that entails is setting the valve clearance. And this tag right here gives the specifications for valve clearance on this engine. This engine apparently needs to be checked fairly often. Uh, check your owner's manual, but um, it's one of the things that's part of a regular maintenance item. So I'm gonna pull the valve cover off. I'm gonna check the clearance as is on the intake and exhaust. And if any adjustments are needed, um, I'll make them. Now of note, this generation of KTM, the 08 through 11, uses valve shims, which is different than the system uh, that preceded it. So uh, instead of being able to adjust the clearance right there on the uh, cam and rocker assembly, it actually requires that you swap out shims. So we'll see if that's needed. Uh, the procedure, once you've got you know, the tank off and all this stuff stripped off, I've got more off than you really need to take, is to take out these uh, valve cover bolts. There's four of them. I think that's gonna be the hardest part of this whole procedure, but um, they're just kind of tucked away. So I've already taken off the uh, pad, for lack of a better term, that's on both sides that the tank sits on just to give me more room. So here's the other two bolts for that valve cover. I'm gonna pull that off and uh, then we'll get to measuring the clearance inside. Here's the motor with the valve cover taken off. I've also removed the spark plug and that's gonna do two things for us. First is um, it removes compression from the engine so that we can rotate it to find top dead center. It also provides a second way of verifying uh, that you're at top dead center. So in order to take the measurement, what we've got to do is make sure that, um, well, a cam will tell us when the, when the piston is at top dead center. What we need to do is align this little dot here that's on the cam with this little impression that's been drilled into the top of this um, rocker shaft uh, uh, bulkhead here. So the way that I do it, um, since the battery's off the bike and the, you know, the starter can't be used, and the starter probably wouldn't be very accurate anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna use the wheel to, um, to rotate the cam. So um, I'm gonna shift it uh, into fifth, sixth gear if I can, so that I can get maximum leverage over the engine. And I'll just, I'll just turn the wheel in order to uh, rotate that, um, rotate the engine and, and line up the cam mark. Here are the fuel gauges I'm gonna use. They're a little bit big for this application. You can get better ones um, that are tapered and fit into smaller places, but uh, these should work just fine. So I also use these as a cheat sheet just for easy uh, metric to uh, inch comparison. The spec, obviously being a KTM is a metric, it's a 0.1 to 0.15 clearance on the intake side, which is this side, and I believe it's a 0.12 to a 0.17, yeah, that's right, uh, millimeter on the exhaust side. So you can see that kind of conveniently that actually kind of lines up here. So uh, 0.1 to 0.15 on the intake would correspond to uh, four thousandths to six thousandths. And on the exhaust side, the 0.12 to 0.17 millimeter corresponds to uh, five thousandths to seven thousandths. I don't have a seven thousandths feeler gauge, but you can stack the three and four, and that'll give you uh, seven thousandths or 0.178 millimeters. I'm gonna show the procedure for measuring the valve clearance using um, the gauges here. So it's pretty straightforward. Start with the smaller size and then work your way up. So four thousandths at 0.102 millimeter, that would be the absolute minimum clearance that's allowed on the intake side. So I'm gonna start with that side and you just slip it right between the rocker and the shim. Now the rear one can be a little bit tough to reach, especially looking through a camera, but it is doable. There we go. And so you'll just feel it slide right through. So four thousandths is the minimum, so we know that we're over the minimum. Let's find out where we are in terms of absolute um, the actual absolute measurement. So here's a five thousandths, and you can see it fits right through. A trick you can do, um, I found, is that if the front one uh, has clearance, you can just keep on driving through that and then send the shim to the rear one. Um, and that may let you um, get into that slot more easily with these big fat feeler gauges. So I can see that my five, yeah, my five thou 
like just barely, like I have to push it. I can, I can just barely get it into there and I can't easily slide it back and forth. So the right side intake valve is just, I would say a hair under five thousandths and the left side intake valve is right at five thousandths. Um, I can tell from the resistance here that it's not going to take six thousandths. So that's okay. Um, five thousandths is literally in the middle of the range. Uh, and so if the right side valve is just a little bit tighter, um, that's okay. We already know that it's above the minimum because it, uh, it, um, it did fit the four thousandths. But I think I'll leave the intake alone. Unfortunately, I, uh, or fortunately for the purposes of this video, I measured the exhaust side and I can only fit the three thousandths gauge into either one. So those are way under. Three thousandths is not even in the range. Uh, the range on those is uh, five to seven thousandths. So I'm gonna have to adjust those and I'll do that next. Getting access to the valve shims is pretty easy. I'm not gonna show the full procedure here because it's pretty awkward with a phone in one hand, but I'll show uh, what you need to do to, to get them out. First thing you need to do is pull these plugs out and you do that with a uh, eight millimeter, yeah, eight millimeter uh, hex. I've already loosened this one, so it's a little bit easier to demonstrate. So this plug comes out. And then what you can do is you'll insert, um, I think this is an M5 bolt. In any case, this is one of the valve cover bolts. It will thread into the rocker shaft. So don't thread it in tightly, but just put it in loosely there. And then the next thing you need to do is use a 10 millimeter to remove um, these bolts that actually hold down the rocker shaft into this um, bulkhead on the top of the engine. So back out this bolt, as well as the other one on the other side. Once those bolts are out, then you can simply pull the rocker shaft out through here. And then the rocker shaft being gone, uh, this rocker arm assembly will come straight up and the, uh, the valve shims will be right on top of the valve springs and you can pick them up with a magnet. So here I've got the cam as well as the rocker assembly and the, uh, I believe the tappets or shims that go on top of the uh, valve springs. I'm removed from the bike and I'm going to shave them down by the thickness that's necessary to add clearance between the uh, rocker assembly and uh, the top of the valves. So the way I'm doing it is using a, um, a, a stone, which is normally used for sharpening knives to a, to a very fine polish, and then I'm following up with a, uh, a fine sandpaper that can put a nearly mirror finish on them. Actually, a mirror finish is, is, is definitely possible with enough, um, enough sanding. So. Uh, the first step is actually just to measure the shims. Um, what I do is I, I figure out what the uh, clearance is between the rocker and the valves to start with. And in my case, there was five valve clearance. And uh, if you do the conversion from KTM spec from millimeters to thousandths, uh, that ends up being seven thousandths as a maximum clearance. So I want to go to the maximum because it gets smaller as the valves wear. So I'm going to add two thousandths of clearance. So all I need to do is measure these, basically find out what their initial measurement is, and then grind out an additional two thousandths of clearance, making sure that I stop um, on the coarse uh, side of the grinding stone early enough that I can switch to the fine side and then finally the sandpaper uh, before I reach my, my final thickness that I want to get to. So that's what I'm going to go do, do now. I figured out the amount I need already. Um, basically there's a side that has the, uh, the side that actually touches the top of the valve and then there's a side that touches the rocker. So I'm going to grind the side that touches the rocker since that's like the flattest side. And I start by putting a little bit of um, oil, thin oil, WD-40 works fine, on my stone. I pick the right side and what I'm doing is either circles or circle eights. And the idea is to use the entire stone and also to keep very flat pressure uh, on the shim so that I'm not, so I'm keeping it in a cylinder shape and I'm not um, grinding one side more than another. So basically what I'm doing is I just keep on doing this using the whole stone and after every, I don't know, minute or so I check the thickness again and like I say as I get closer to the final dimension I want I'll switch to the fine side of the stone and then to sandpaper. I've been grinding on the coarse side of the stone for about three or four minutes now so I, 
I wiped the shim off and I'm taking a measurement and using my calipers, it's a little bit tough to see on camera, but these measure, oh, just under about 0 0.105, so about 0 0.1045, which is great. These started at 0 0.106 and I wanted to take two thousandths off, so that would be 0 0.104 that I'm shooting for. I've got a little bit more than that, so I'm gonna to flip to the fine side of the stone. I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I was doing with the coarse side. Use a little oil to flush away particles and just go do circle eights back and forth or circles uh, to get a nice shiny fine surface on the shim. And here I'm, I'm only looking to remove a little bit less than half out. So I'll probably only do this for about 30 seconds or a minute, and then I'll check it with the calipers again. Once I check with the calipers and I'm satisfied that it's close to my final dimension, uh, I'll stop doing this and I'll just put a final uh, fine, fine polish on it with sandpaper. One more thing to mention here, if you're using two fingers to hold onto the shim, it can be really easy to accidentally put more pressure on one side or the other. So an easy way to keep it even is just to rotate it periodically. You know, do circles um, after a uh, you know, set amount of time, rotate it 90 degrees and continue rotate it 90 degrees again and continue. That'll sort of eliminate any of the bias you might accidentally be putting on one side or the other. I finished doing my polishing on the fine side of the stone and I've taken a measurement and I'm right where I wanna be at about 104 thousandths, which is uh, two thousandths smaller than the shim started out, which corresponds to two thousandths more clearance between the uh, rocker and the valve. So you can see the surface here that's left by the fine side of the stone. It's not bad, but we can make it a little bit better. Uh, so at this point, we're not removing any thickness anymore. It's just about making the surface uh, shinier so that there's less friction between the rocker and, um, and the shim. So here I've got 2000 grit sandpaper. It's a 3M product. It's a wet dry paper. Uh, it does work with oil okay. It doesn't disintegrate or anything. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on here. Again, I just use WD-40 because it's actually a great all-purpose light oil. It's cheap and it's readily available and I have some here. I'm using my uh, table saw. Obviously this is not ideal, but working with what I've got right now, I've got so many projects going on that uh, I hate to work like this, but I just got to get some things done to focus on uh, prog progress and not perfection using what I got. So I've got the 2000 grit sandpaper on the table. Uh, that gives it some flatness. It's not critical that the table be perfectly flat because again, we're not really removing material here. We're not changing thickness. We're just trying to get a polish uh, on the on the surface of the shim and really all this is doing is taking away the uh, The marks from grinding on the fine side of the stone, which was the previous step. So Circle eights are a great way to get even pressure and even polishing I'm still going to rotate it periodically just to make sure that I'm not introducing any bias into uh, with you know one side or another of the shim due to difference in pressure from my hand so I'll do some circles too I'm not so concerned about using the whole sandpaper here because it's disposable, whereas the stone I want to keep for a long time. So even after just maybe 30 seconds or so of polishing, I'll give it a quick wipe here, and we can see that the, uh, the surface will be markedly improved, although covered in a bit of oil still. So there you go. We're starting to see a bit of a mirror finish come through. I'm going to do this for a couple more minutes, and we'll get a nice fine surface on there been polishing for about five minutes and here's the finished product. You can see that it's starting to develop a bit of a mirror finish. Uh, very light scratches left. You can never get it totally clean. It seems like there's always a little bit of oil left on there, but I decided to compare it to the original rockers and you can see that they're roughly equivalent. The original rocker isn't quite perfect either. Uh, if anything, it'll still retain a little bit of oil and these two parts will will wear together and I'm confident that that surface will be sufficient. So the next step is to uh, remeasure it, uh, stop dropping it, and put it back in the bike for final fitment. Both rocker shaft hold down bolts are torqued down. That does matter if they're um, tight, it actually affects the uh, the measurement that you'll get in terms of the clearance from the valve. So those need to be torqued when you take your measurement. And moment of truth was successful. Um, this feeler gauge, which is actually a combo of two feeler gauges that add up to seven thousandths, just barely fit in there. I mean, you really have to work at it to get it just in the right spot. And this is a combination of a three paired up with a 
four thousandths gauge. I clean them really well and, and they stack together. So that's seven thousandths, which adds up to about 0.17 and change of a millimeter. It's actually a little bit closer to 0.18. I'm okay with that. Uh, as this wears, it's actually gonna wear um, towards less clearance. So I'm okay with being at the top end of the range in terms of maximum clearance being here. And uh, the exhaust side was the side that was actually way under clearanced when I initially measured it. So it would appear that the exhaust side actually wears faster. Okay, I'm happy with my valve clearance and I've reinstalled the plug on the end of the rocker shaft there. I've also got my spark plug uh, prepped with some anti-seize, which is always a good idea when you're installing a steel spark plug into an aluminum head. Before I put the spark plug back in, while I, uh, I'm gonna take advantage of not having compression in the engine to squirt some oil on the areas where I was working uh, underneath this valve rocker and the shim and just get some oil in there. And then I'll, since it's still in gear, I'll be able to spin the tire and actually rotate the engine a little bit and get some lube up into that area where I was working so that the first time the engine fires up, it'll be lubricated even before oil pressure is built. Uh, other than that, it's just putting on the valve cover and buttoning everything up, checking your oil levels and doing all the normal things you would do before starting the engine.